Yo, yo, what's good? What's good, people? How y'all doing? It's your boy Kelvin with Behind the Bench. Shout out to everybody, man. Hope everybody doing well. All right, I'm going to get right to it. Just want to make a real quick video. Uh, I saw uh, the brother Johnny Arnett put out a video about Michael Jordan and the whole thing. With 1988 was Defensive Player of the Year. And uh, he put out a video uh, the games that he watched and um, he gave his thoughts and opinions on it and then um, some other people I seen some other uh, YouTube was kind of reacting to it and I just want to give my quick thoughts on it um, real quick first off uh, this is no disrespect to Johnny Johnny a good dude but the information that he gave on his video about the rules uh, it was incorrect. And this is the reason why I put out the video I did, the little audio video I did last week about knowing the rules and understanding the rules, man. You know what I'm saying? And when I, I seen this video twice, part of it twice. I seen, the, I heard it the first time, I kind of glanced through it. You know what I'm saying? I skimmed through his video. And it didn't click to me at first what he was saying about the rules. Then I heard somebody reacting to his video, and I listened to it again, what Johnny said, and it caught my attention. And, uh, yeah, what he said about the rules, uh, how you're being credited for a steal, that is incorrect. Okay, that is that is not correct. And it's just not to discredit his time and his effort. And his work as far as his video production he did and his editing as far as uh, putting up his video. Uh, I'm not trying to discredit that, but what he said in the video about the rules is incorrect. Let me go over it again uh, one more time. You know what I'm saying? Because this is very important. And I said it on my previous video. It's the reason why I said it. I know we got a smaller platform. And this platform is much bigger, but it's a reason why I did that because you have to read that rule book very, very closely and slowly. And you have to look at the video examples they have on the NBA website. And then it's different sections to uh, the rules also on their website. Okay. Let me go over it again. And this is where the gray area and this is where people are misinterpreting the rules and understanding it. Okay. All right. Of course, we know you get credit for a steal by intercepting the pass in the air. We know you can get credit for a steal by, you know, just ripping, as we say, ripping the dribbler. Somebody dribbling the ball, you knock the ball away, you take the ball from. That's considered a steal. Okay. This is where the gray area, let me explain to y'all again. And this is where Johnny had it incorrect. Okay. Your natural instinct is to think, okay, like if the offense got the ball and let's say they try to make a pass and there's a defender that deflects the ball and his team gets the ball and it's considered a turnover or whatever. Your natural instinct is to think, okay, the person who deflected the ball gets credit for a steal. That is not always the case. And I said it on a previous video. Let me say it again. If you go to the NBA website, they go into detail and they show you a video example. It's called control tip or control deflection. When you deflect the ball, it must be done in a controlled manner where it is the ball is going in the direction of your teammate. That is what's called a control tip or a control deflection. And when you do that, you'll get credit for a steal if the ball is tapped or deflected in the direction of your teammate. That is very, very important. Okay. Now, there are some instances where the ball is deflected by a defender and it's what's called uncontrolled. And that is where, like, I explained to y'all before, where on one of them games, Larry Bird, 
comes off a screen, he's going off for a shot, and at the last minute he changes his mind to try to pass it. And the guy for the Chicago Bulls, you know, his natural instinct is just to put his hands up and try to deflect the pass. And he does. And when he deflects the pass, the ball goes in the air, and the ball goes towards Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan, I think he jumps up and grabs or he grabs it. Your natural instinct to think, okay, the guy for, that deflected it first is credited with the steal. But no, that is what is called an uncontrolled tip or uncontrolled deflection. And the person who's credited for the steal is the person who picks up the ball, which will be Michael Jordan. And that happened in the video. Also, it was another player I explained to y'all, and Johnny missed on that also. I think he pointed it out, but he did not do it correctly. There is a play where Charles Oakley deflects the ball. He's guarding Kevin McHale in the post. Charles Oakley knocks the ball out of his hand. The ball is bouncing on the floor. I think McHale might have tried to pick it up or something or whatever. He mishandled it or whatever. Michael Jordan runs over there and grabs the ball. Michael Jordan is credited with a steal on that play, and rightfully so, because the ball that Charles Oakley deflected was not deflected in a controlled manner in the direction of a teammate. This is very, very important. And when Johnny explained it on his video, he said it incorrectly. He said it the opposite way. Just because a defender touches the ball, whoever touches it first, does not necessarily mean that, that the first person who touches it is going to get credit for a steal. You know what I'm saying? I know it looks unnatural in your your mind and your natural instinct is to think, okay, the first person who touched it, that is not correct. You know what I'm saying? It must be done what they deem in a controlled manner in the direction of a teammate. Or if you tip or deflect the ball and the ball is bouncing there and you run over there and grab it yourself, whoever did it, you get credit for a steal for that also. You know what I'm saying? And again, it is a lot of gray area dealing with steals and you're dealing with humans and you're dealing with just the human element. And then you're going back almost 40 years. They did not have the technology that we have now. And then was in our chat the other day and Kobe Bryant film room mentioned something that's very, very important. There was a lot less spacing back then. The game was played on the inside out. So you got stat keepers back in the day back then. I'm not sure where they were sitting at, but they might have been sitting courtside. And you got these big giant guys, six, seven, six, eight, seven foot, and you got a lot of traffic in the paint, and they trying to make a judgment call on the fly without the technology that we have. Sometimes it might be just some human error. You know, there's nobody out there trying to intentionally inflate steals and blocks and stuff like that. So you're dealing with the human element with less spacing and different interpretation of the rules 40 years ago. There might be, you know, it's going to be a lot of gray and you might make a mistake here and there. Now, I do know. I watched like three or four of those games, and they were pretty accurate. It was one game I believe I saw against the Hawks, I believe, where I thought was kind of off. But the games I saw, I have not watched all season. I watched three or four of them, and they were pretty close. I do know the Celtics game, if that guy, Tom Havishaw, whatever, put on the list, Michael Joy was credited for five steals, and that game was 100% accurate. If you know the rules, it is very, very important. You have to know the rules, man. And then, again, how they interpreted the rules back then, it might be different than how we do now. Also, I seen someone post it online, and I seen it on another part of the NBA website where a defender can get credited for a steal if – they knocked the ball off the offensive player. Let's say the offensive player is dribbling, and they tip the ball and say they knock it off his leg, and the ball go out of bounds, and it's a turnover. I've seen where you can get credit for a steal for that. Now, don't quote me 100% on that. I saw someone posted the rules 
on Twitter, and I did see that on another another section of the NBA website. I'm not sure about that, but I did see that also. And then also, another thing you have to take into account, this is another play where you can get credit for a steal. I've seen this in the modern era. I seen this about two weeks ago with uh, a video clip with Jaron Jackson Jr. I think he won defensive player of the year last year or the year before. I'm not sure exactly when he won it, but let me explain this. You can get credit for a steal with this also. And I seen the clip with Michael Jordan, I believe, got credit for a steal with this also. Where Okay, let's say the offensive player has the ball, and you're the defender, and you – deflect the ball and the ball is bouncing and it's going towards out of bounds and you as a defender run over there and grab it and so you jump in the air and you grab it and your momentum is carrying you out of bounds but you up in the air and let's say you throw the ball back inbounds and when you throw it back inbounds your team gets possession of it you can get credit for a steal with that you know what I'm saying I've seen I seen that play with Jaron Jackson Jr. Or also you can get you can do that same situation where the ball, you tip it, deflect it, and the ball going out of bounds, and you run over there and grab, you jump it, you in the air, you grab it, and you throw it back in bounds. And the team that had the ball, they get possession. And the shot clock resets. They get a new shot clock. Well, the stat keepers, they deem that a steal, change of possession. And then you get credit for a turnover. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so you have instances with that also where you get credit for a steal. This is the reason why I didn't rush to watch them games and jump out the window and stuff like that. Because I know it's a lot of human element to it. It's a lot of different interpretation of the rules as far as the steals. And what they were dealing with back then as far as technology and stuff like that it was different. You know what I'm saying? And I just wanted to make this quick video because what Johnny said on this video was not accurate, man. That That, that is very, very important. You know what I'm saying? Just because you touch the ball first, tip or deflect it, does not mean the first person who touches it is going to get credit for a steal that is 100 percent inaccurate and again i'm not trying to check trash johnny johnny is a good dude he used to be in our sports chat a few years ago and i've spoken to the dude and the guys in our group spoke with him and we talked and johnny is a good guy and i appreciate his effort and his work that he did on this video but how he explained the rules as far as deflections and steals and tips that is that is false. That is not accurate. And the number he put where the disparity between the steals of what he saw and what was recorded, that massive difference, that is incorrect. I know for sure the Celtics game was 100% correct. It was a game they played against Denver. I think Jordan got credited with six steals. That was close to accurate. I think five of the six was at, uh, very pretty much accurate. I seen that myself. Um, I got to go through, you know, when I have time, you know, I'm down in Houston, man, dealing with this hurricane crap. I'm not at home. You know what I'm saying? But when I get time, I will watch all six and give my thoughts, and I'll do a visual video. But I just want to make this video. And, again, it's no disrespect to John. I, I like his channel. I watch his channel often. He make good videos. But uh, I need to put that out there, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the LeBron fans, they're going to say what they're going to say. They're going to think somebody was intentionally inflating stats. Uh, I don't care nothing about what they say or what they think. they stupid. I don't even engage with them. And, um, you know, the fact that we even have to talk about stuff from 40 years ago is ridiculous. That's the reason why I didn't really put no urgency into watching that and putting out no video about that, man. Because to me, it's not that significant, man. You know what I'm saying? Let Nick Wright and all them say what they're going to say. You know, it's not about the stats and the steals or whatever and the reason why Michael Jordan won Defensive Player of the Year. It's the eye test, the effort, 
And what you see is when you're watching these games, you see the effort. You see the hustle, the artist. I've said it many times on videos on our channel about Michael Jordan. Pre-championship years when he was very, very young. 1987 to 1990, right before he started winning championships. Michael Jordan was like an alien. His athleticism and his quickness and what he did is eye-popping. It's something you've never seen. It jumps off the screen. You know what I'm saying? And when you watch that, that was that is what jumps out at you. You know what I'm saying? But when you got evil, demonic, sick motherfuckers like this dude Habershaw and Nick Wright out trying to do evil, trying to trash legends and stuff, the opposite is going to happen. I've already seen it in comments on Twitter and stuff. I've seen younger fans that watch it be like, man, i never seen Michael Jordan in the 80s. I see why he won defensive player of the year. He was so quick and athletic. And I, I, what I see is the defensive player of the year. And see, what is going to happen is the LeBron fans, they're going to do what they're going to do, talk and run their mouth. But somebody that's not a hardcore LeBron fan, just a basketball fan, they're going to be intrigued and they're going to see it. They might see Michael Jordan for the same time, and it's going to have the opposite effect of what this dude, Tom Havishaw, is trying to do. He's trying to deter people and trick them and think all oh, the stat keepers were juicing the stats and stuff like that, try to discredit Michael Jordan, and it's going to have the opposite effect. You know what I'm saying? And it's already happening. I've, I've, I've already seen it myself. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, man, I just wanted to say that. Uh, salute to John on this video, man. There's no disrespect, but the information that he put out as far as the rules is not correct. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'll go over the, the video myself, uh, over the games myself, man, at some point. And maybe I'll put out a video, but that is very, very important, man. you dealing... I cannot stress that enough. You're dealing with human beings back then, almost 40 years ago. Man, a lot of them people probably not even living, man. Them scorekeepers and stuff, man. That was so long ago, and you're dealing with less space. Uh, stat keepers probably sitting on the floor of the table at different angles. You don't know what they can see, or maybe they're sitting up high. I don't know, but you're dealing with a lot of congestion and stuff, with big bodies in the paint. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that Michael Jordan wasn't credited for a steal or two there. Maybe he shouldn't have had. But this huge disparity they talking about, oh, man, the stat keepers were in. The fix was in. No. No, you're dealing with human beings that's trying to get an accurate, uh, you know, accurate account of what they see, what they seen, excuse me, at that time. And they did the best they could. And for the most part, from what i seen, from game, I have not watched all six, but from the three or four games I watched, I thought it was pretty accurate. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was pretty good. Um, I didn't see no major inflation. Um, but maybe I'll tag Johnny or Rashad or something and, and i check, and maybe he'll come back and i check, and I'll talk to him again. But um, that needs to be noted for that video, what he said. Um, it's not correct as far as the tips and the flexions. That is very, very important. And again, it's a lot of gray area in that, man. I cannot stress that even today, you're dealing with the rules today. It's just dealing with the human element, a lot of gray, and stat keepers and whatever, man. You know, if it's kind of 50-50, they're just going to give credit to the home team. The home player. Not that they intentionally try to inflate anything, but it could be a bang bang play. It could be close, and they just got to do what they got to do. They got to do something as far as they got to give credit to somebody, or whatever. And, you know, that's that. But anyway, man, that's all I wanted to say. I holler at y'all. I'm out.